Once upon a time, there was a little girl who was kidnapped by a kind huntress. The huntress was beautiful and had a lovely mask and a hatchet, which she used to slaughter the innocent who came into her domain. This is the story of how that little girl came to love that beautiful huntress. Chapter 1. Coming Home Warmth. It was so warm. A soft blanket of brightness and comfort enveloped her body. Anna stirred restlessly from her sleep, savouring the sensation of the crackling hearth. It wasn't long before her mother would be back. She would beat her senselessly, scarcely remembering to hold back enough for her to stay living. Anna would simply lie there on the frigid granite, thankful for every moment she was not afflicted with agony. She would watch in wonder as plumes of her breath ascended into the air as fine haze. Her bruised and battered cheeks flush against the interlocking array of tiles, soothing, cleansing, numbing. Her housemaid would come for her then, Elizabeth, or something else akin to it. It had been so long since her housemaid had last appeared in the desolate mansion that Anna had forgotten. She was a taciturn individual who had no care of her speaking. She did as she was ask, asked, attending to Anna's wounds with painstaking care, check, checking over her youthful skin for marks of her punishment. Anna almost began to welcome her visits, enjoying, enjoyed eyeing her comparatively exotic garments, imagining what the prim and proper lady outside of caring for her, outside the inescapable boundaries of the mansion. It looked like her small elation had been too evident, as on the eve of the housemaid's seventh visit, lying on the ground waiting, aching from a myriad of wounds, she didn't come. In fact, no one came that day, or the day after it, or any day thereafter. Her one consolation had been snatched cruelly away from her. Her father was an even more distant figure, as if shrouded by a veil of mist. He was no more a figure in her life than a landmark on the horizon. The few times that Anna had seen her father, he had been an emotionless stranger, barely glancing at his own daughter. In her memory, his eyes were scratched out, obscured by a swirling vortex and abyss of forgotten memories. He was ob obfuscated from her by the unknown, more of a title that she didn't know the meaning of. No one cared about her, or even bothered to keep up the facade that they did. She was nothing. She began to think that perhaps she was better off dead. Hannah shifted slightly, attempting to find a position that was more comfortable to her on the wooden slats behind her. There was a tug of resistance as Anna felt the most peculiar of sensations upon her neck. A rough and chafing rope was tied firmly to her neck, fastened fir firmly to the wall behind her. Unsettled air currents sifted past the wooden slats, bringing f forth with it a foreign scent of pines and decaying leaves bouldering away silently in the undergrowth. A quiet lullaby struck up nearby so close to her that she could almost feel the breath hot upon her neck. Screams of dread and agony, it all came back to her. A woman clad in the head of a hair spattered with crimson, burying her hatchet into her mother's skull with detached glee. And eyes, those eyes, black beads, the color of sin itself, they threatened to swallow her in their darkness to consume her very being wholly. She stalked closer and closer until Anna could see the torn threads of her blood-stained seraphan. She was only a little girl, yet she too would die with the same cold, glassy eyes her mother had. They were all the same in the end. Her pounding heartbeat accelerated to a howling cadence. A bloodied hatchet sat beside her, begrimed hatchet head embedded into a nearby log, biting into the wooden grain. Her mother's blood was sanguine on the oak haft. And there, 
in the darkness, lit by the dim candlelight, was a rabbit mask, consummated with eyes darker still, watching her. She was not at home. She was far from home. Anna screamed. A long wailing shriek resounded through the crepuscule forest. She kept screaming as long as her lungs would permit. The predator before her didn't flinch in the slightest. Perhaps she was accustomed to the tortured cries of her victims. She merely cocked her head to the side in curiosity, watching her every move with intense focus. The sweet and tuneful melody of a lullaby continued to waft from her lips. She was so near that she could smell the scent of fresh blood mingled into the rough and abrasive cloth she wore. Anna would die at the hands of the one before her. Her blood would coat the hatchet head alongside her mother's. Before the killer, the judgment for all was equal. Death. Her screams dissolved into sobs, racking through her fragile, paper-like frame, refusing to accept her fate. She had faced pain before, but the prospect of death was something new and unfamiliar. The dark side of her reveled in the new sensation, taking in the aroma of fear. The tension in her, in her muscles pulled taut and greedily feasting. The huntress's hand cast a pitch black shadow as it came down towards her, no doubt to take her away kicking and struggling before she was slaughtered like cattle. Anna strained at the rope, trying to maintain the largest berth between her and the murderer. For the briefest mo of moments, she swore that the huntress had hesitated her eyes holding some shards of ordinary life. However, the shred of humanity vanished as rapidly as it had appeared, instead replaced with a cold and inhuman spite as her fearsome figure loom loomed above Anna. And then suddenly, with the distant click of a lock, her so sobs too dissolved into sea foam as it reached the shore. It was a revelation, perfect and impeccable. She would die, removed from the mortal coil for the good of all of humanity. And as the grimy hand neared her head, she welcomed it with open arms, welcoming the release of death. She closed her eyes and rejoiced, only to be sorely disappointed. She was caressing her, almost comforting her. Granted, the weathered and leathery skin wasn't at all comfortable. But the meaning behind the gesture was more than what words could convey. She cared for Anna in a way that no one else did. Her hand slid through her flowing tresses of hair and down to her cheek, cupping it gently while she stroked the soft flesh, as if the mere movement could have broken Anna. In that moment, she understood. Anna was a precious doll to her that the huntress couldn't forward to break. Her mournful lullaby reached its conclusion, the huntress's voice breaking, holding back the sobs. A twisted knot formed in Anna's throat, despite not at all comprehending the story behind the song. What she could comprehend that the, was that the huntress was in pain, constantly reliving the event with each passing day. She let the tune wash over her, her eyelids growing heavy, letting the melancholy tones lull her to sleep.